current president and Harold, uh, I know they've been extremely supportive of, of playing this fall and worked extremely hard and certainly demonstrated their commitment uh, towards, towards playing this fall. And then most of all, our players, you know, nobody's uh, worked any harder and nobody's demonstrated more commitment to making, uh, you know, making that a reality than those guys. They've been here since June 8th, uh, done a wonderful job in all regards. And, uh, you know, because of that, just it, it's really disappointing for everybody. But uh, uh, that's where we're at right now. And, uh, you know, we learned of the decision today. So now we'll uh, re recalibrate, uh, adjust, and uh, see what we can do moving forward. But you know, we're gonna all go through a period of uh, just you know disappointment and hurt here for a while. It's extremely frustrating, and uh, it's just it's a tough uh, tough news to hear. But fully understand, appreciate uh, the decision making, and you know we just uh, we have to move forward from uh, from this point. All right, we'll go ahead and start with some questions, uh, David Eichel. If you want to go ahead and start. Yeah, Kirk, I guess, what would you kind of tell the team uh, just shortly following what was your message to them? And do you plan on uh, going through with workouts and everything? I believe there's a 20 hour limit for the fall. Are you guys going to be do uh, participating in that? Yeah, so a couple thoughts on that. First of all, just what I shared with you. Um, above everything, I'm just really disappointed for our players. Um, you know, players, we talk to them all the time about how limited their clock is. Um, you know, it's such a small window of opportunity to play football, be it high school, college. And if you're fortunate enough to play beyond it, that's even uh, tighter. So it's just disappointing because they've worked hard. They've done everything we could have asked them and then some, and they've done it in tough circumstances. So that part's, uh, it's hard. And it, it's like losing a game. There's really nothing you can say to make anybody feel better. Um, so, you know, that that is uh, in a short uh, short, short uh, window. That is what it is. Uh, then as far as moving forward, you know, you may know we canceled practice yesterday. We did it, did it today as well. Uh, and it's not because we weren't committed to playing this season. Uh, my guess was based on what I had heard, the earliest we'd play would be the 29th or 20, the last week of September. And if so, I thought our guys needed a break. They've been going hard for quite some time and we would pick it up again next week. But, um, the other thing, I, didn't, I certainly didn't want to risk anybody getting injured practicing when we weren't sure about a season, uh, what that was going to look like. So when we get back here, you know, what I told the guys, our, our thoughts have been fully on this season, playing this fall, preparing for this fall. Whether it start on September 5th or a later date, that was our, our focus and commitment. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll process this. We'll figure out what a, a smart way to go about it is when the guys get back. Right now, I've encouraged them to take uh, this week and next week away from football, and we'll get back here on the on the twenty fourth, twenty fifth, and uh, you know start moving forward from that point. John Bonacamp, go ahead. Yeah, Kirk, what was what was the players' reaction? I mean, obviously, they probably knew something like this was coming, but but what was their reaction today? Uh, you know, disappointment's the best word, certainly, but it, it's emotional. It's hard, and um, you know, I know, I know, you know, for months now, I've heard fans, you know, you know, you're getting coffee or whatever. Hey, hope there's a season, you know, everybody you talk with, that's how they, uh, you know, it's been conveyed. You know, football is a big part of our life, especially here in the Midwest, college football, especially. Uh, but, but it doesn't mean more to anybody than the players, you know, nobody. And the coaches are right there with it. That is what we do. It's such a big part of our lives. But, but it's not life or death either. And uh, this is probably a good reminder that, you know, we're, we're facing something that's uh, uh, unprecedented in our history, at least uh, at least in our lifetimes. So we're, we're trying to deal with it. And I think that probably drove this final decision as much as anything. But, uh, you know, all that being said, today, today will be a historic day. And it's a really disappointing day for everybody involved. Uh, J.R. Ogden, go ahead. Are you on? Can't hear you, Jr. Okay. There we there you go. You Hi, Coach. Um, I, know, I know some of the players have indicated they started, you know, uh, kind of a group of you know, we, we want to play uh, over the weekend. Um, or is that? I'm assuming that's still their feeling. They they really want to go forward with the season. 
It is, and um, that that's kind of been the, the sense of our team. We've had a couple guys mulling, mulling uh, you know, not playing, I know, and uh, one I think was leaning very, very strongly towards that. But the majority of our guys have, have uh, all along wanted to play. They've been, that's what they've uh, been working for. They've demonstrated that more than talking about it, more than tweeting about it, or, you know, going on social media. They've been here day in and day out working uh, in, in, you know, perilous uh, circumstances, certainly. So, uh, you know, I think that that's the most important thing. And I'd say the same thing about uh, Gary Bard and, and uh, President Harold. To me, they've demonstrated that they were they were doing all they could to push this thing forward. That that's a lot more meaningful than talking about. And a lot of people are talking a lot right now. Uh, I don't mind telling you, I take a little bit of a personal offense to that. Uh, only in that talking about it doesn't mean it means more to you than people that aren't talking about it. I think it's more about how you do things and what you what you demonstrate through action. And our players have been above and beyond that way. They've all demonstrated whether it's the, the decisions and being personally responsible away from the building, training in the building. Uh, and then most recently, the last couple of weeks being out here practicing, you know, with their teammates and, and just acting like good teammates, all those kinds of things. So yeah, I've, I've been watching it now since uh, June 8th, what, what our team's uh, done. I've been watching that in person. Uh, and it's been very, very impressive to me. And it makes it that much more disappointing that, that we have to deliver bad news to them today. All right, Scott Docterman, go ahead. Yeah, Kirk, uh, you know, thanks for doing this. Um, I guess, you know, my question is, you know, as some sort of a spring season, I mean, you know, we, you talked about this three or four months ago that it's going to screw up 2021 season as well because to, to play 20, you know, 12 games and a bowl game per se in, in the spring and then the same type of scenario in the fall mm -hmm. – that's just uh, physically, I think that it's such a demanding sport. It's kind of hard to do that. Um, has there, is it too early right now to even discuss how the spring would progress if you're able to even play that year, that part of the year? Yeah, I think it is too early. Um, and I'll add to this, I've, I've been on a lot of Zoom calls now with the coaches and athletic directors. And, and to my recollection, I can't remember us ever talking about, you know, what, what the spring would look like. So Again, all the focus has been strictly on making, what can we do to get to the field this fall? What's it gonna look like? Is it gonna be 10 games, 12 games? Uh, we never really had discussion about less than that. So everything's been focused on that now. Uh, unfortunately, we have a lot of time to recalibrate and just try to you know, talk about it uh, in an intelligent fashion. But yeah, to your point, um, that's I think when we look at the spring, we have to look at the entire calendar year for 2021. And I'm sure that'll be where the discussions all begin. But uh, we've got time to think about it. And I think that'll be the next, obviously, next uh, item of business is what, what, what can it look like? And then how do we uh, get to work on, on making it become a reality? Scott Reister, go ahead. Uh, hi, Coach. Can you hear me? Yep. I can hear you. Yep. Yep. Sorry about that. Um, yep. Uh, Nebraska coach Scott Frost yesterday said that even if the Big Ten cancels, they still are going to try to play. Is there any thought of that happening at Iowa? You know, it's easier to say things in life. Uh, it's another thing to say them and then do them. And, um, you know, uh, we haven't said anything about that. Um, you know, I'm only one person speaking. I'll, I'll defer to uh, Gary Barter, our director of athletics, and President Harold. It's probably more appropriate, but just as a coach in this conference, uh, it's my 31st year in the conference, and uh, uh, I've always – one of the reasons I've been here 31 years, or at least in, involved in Big Ten play, Big Ten I've, – I've got great respect for what the conference stands for. I think also being in a conference, it's important that we're together. And, you know, we discuss things independently. Uh, I, I think it goes without saying every coach wanted to play this fall. I, I can tell you, again, based on personal experience, each and every one of our players, with the exception of maybe a two or three, were committed through demonstrated action that they wanted to play this fall. Uh, the way it turned out, uh, that's, that's not going to happen. So now we're, we're refocusing on what the next step can be. And um, you know, we, we, to my knowledge, have had no discussion about doing anything against what the conference decides. and. Um, as much as we may want to, uh, that just, you know, 
the conference has made a decision. We're going to abide by that unless they reconsider. Chad Lice to come. Hey, Coach. Um, sorry about the news. Um, what it seemed like communication was maybe lacking um, from leaders or whatever. What was your view on what maybe could have been done better in terms of you know being fair to the players and and everything like that? Uh, you know, I can only speak from one person's perspective. Um, we've we've had continual communication with our athletic directors. Gary and I have uh, open lines of communication. We talk frequently, especially as you might imagine through a period like this. So we, we've been in constant communication. Uh, I appreciate the access we've had to uh, visiting with coaches and athletic directors together. It's been routine and regular. I think it's been communicative and uh, the conference office is involved in that as well. So, um, you know, I can only speak to my experiences. I think it's been healthy. But, but ultimately, I also have learned in life, you know, there's a chain of command. And uh, I'm certainly not a medical expert. And I think, you know, whether it's national or whether it's uh, state, or in this case, campus or conference, you know, there are certain things that uh, right now, I think the presidents and, and the medical experts have responsibility for. And ultimately, I think, you know, they really are, are the ones who have the best vantage point about what, what does make sense for our, our campus and what, what makes sense for our conference. So, uh, you know, those decisions, I I'm feel confident that all the input was taken from uh, football coaches, athletic directors, but ultimately somebody has to make decisions. And I think that's, uh, that's what's happened here. And it's, it was done conference as a conference. So I doubt it was unanimous. I, I doubt that, but I, you know, it rarely does happen where things are unanimous. And, uh, but I, I feel confident there was healthy discussion and hopefully you know, this is uh, proves to be the wisest decision. Mark Friend, do you have a question there? I do, Kirk. Uh, sorry about the news. Um, you've talked a little bit about the players. Uh, obviously, Trevor Lawrence was a big one in kind of uh, advocating for this season. And, and one of the important points that he noted that, uh, seemed to be that he thought, and I think a lot of the majority of the players thought that they would be safer uh, in your relative bubble than they would be in their home environments, in their, uh, you know, classrooms, et cetera. Uh, what's your feeling on that? Do you agree with that statement? And, and I guess uh, how much have your players spoken about that aspect of it, that they feel that we should be playing simply for the fact that they should be in your relative bubble? I think that's, that reflects uh, uh, how a lot of our players feel, especially based on today's meeting as well. Uh, so, you know, I, I do think that's, uh, that's definitely how our guys feel. And I, I don't disagree with that. I guess uh, I, I think if you look at bigger picture, there are two things that uh, we don't know right now. Uh, the NBA, from my vantage point, has the best of, of all worlds, right? They do have a true bubble. And that, that to me, is the best way to ensure you're going to have a chance to really move forward without an interruption. Uh, I think the reality of, um, of a college football team with 100-plus players makes that a little different challenge. The fact that our players aren't professional makes it a different challenge. And then the other thing we haven't witnessed yet, uh, we haven't seen a contact sport actually play on a routine basis, practice and play. And I think that's the other, the missing element right now that we don't have, you know, hard data on. So um, as much as baseball, baseball probably reflects, as closely reflects what, what we're talking about duplicating at this point. Uh, the numbers involved in Major League Baseball compared to a college football team aren't comparable, and, and baseball is not a contact sport for the most part. So, but I think you know their players being exposed to, you know, just the other things that are out there in normal society, probably a little bit of a parallel there. But that this, you know, obviously this is a really complex equation, and and again, nobody's got that hard data on it because nobody's ever tried to tried to do what we're we're talking about doing. Rick Coleman, do you have a question? All right, let's move ahead. Michael Bryan. Yeah, can you hear me, Coach? Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks for doing this again. I apologize for the news. How hard was it for you to, to keep your optimism over the last six days, knowing that it was six days ago that the conference released the schedule? It seemed like things were going to be, obviously, in this day and age, things can change day by day, as we've now seen. But um, what did 
how did it change for you when the Mac decided, which seemed like it was the first domino to fall, when the Mac decided to not play? How did that affect your optimism and in the last 72 hours since from the, from the Big Ten schedule being released? Um, did you kind of see it as writing on the wall or how hopeful were you? Yeah, uh, as it pertains to the Mac uh, making their announcement on Saturday, I believe it was Saturday, that, that really didn't uh, surprise me totally. And, um, you know, but I, I also, I think all of us had confidence, at least with the Big Ten announcing the schedule last Wednesday. The thing that made sense about it was we had wiggle room. We had an ability to push uh, to September 26, or perhaps even as far back as October 3rd. So, I guess my assumption or presumption might have been that, you know, I thought the first first step might be a delay. And we were prepared for that. Again, that tied into our thinking about not practicing yesterday or today. But, you know, for whatever reason, this is the decision we've we've come up with. And and again, I'm I'm sure it's based on really good information uh, from very smart people. So, you know, that that is where we're at today. And it's it's disappointing to say the least. But you know, we'll, uh, we'll get our feet on the ground, we'll deal with it, and try to move forward the best we can. Steve Batterson. Yeah, ahead, Steve. Kurt, uh, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, given the uncertainty of the, of the past week, has there been a different feel as you've interacted with, with your players as opposed to maybe previous camps? Yeah, camp's been different because we weren't we were supposed to put pads on, I think, Sunday and um, didn't do that. But I, I can't say again enough about our players. They've been, you know, they've really been unflappable through this whole time. Um, it is weird to, you know, we've all got masks on most of the time when we're in the building. That that's strange. You know, you, you can't get past that. Uh, and we're we're not eating together, all, all those kinds of things, the things that are great about football. But, but the guys, their attitudes have been great. We're on the field. It is weird when guys have masks on on the field. That's really weird. But um, their attitudes have been great. They've been positive. Uh, young people are really um, amazing in that realm. And I think that's, that's really what you enjoy as a coach is uh, seeing how young people, just how vibrant they are and uh, pretty much how, how resilient they are. You know, but today was a tough day for them. And it's been tough for all of us. But, but we'll all get through this, and they'll get through this. I'm confident of that. And, uh, you know, we'll just figure out a way to deal with it. But uh, uh, they, they've been great to, to that point. Uh, they've just been, they've been practicing, uh, you know, doing, them, doing things really well with a great attitude. And you know, I, I can't compliment them enough. They've really been great. And this goes back to March 13th when we left campus. They've, they found a way to, you know, meet every challenge. And that's, that's a great thing about youth. And uh, we'll, we'll work our way through this thing, too. We'll figure it out. We'll just, you know, keep pushing forward. But there's going to be a period of disappointment. We're all going to go through that. Thanks. Yep. Mark Woodley, do you have a question? Not sure if he's still on here. Uh, Tom Caker, go ahead. Hey, Kirk. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, what's, uh, was there any time in the past, like, 24 hours where you kind of thought maybe this was, you know, it seemed like it was dead in the water maybe a day ago, but then yesterday, maybe in the evening at, Felt like maybe it was turning again. Well, you're always optimistic. You're always hopeful, and I think again, based on uh, the announcement of the schedule last week, uh, I think probably all of our hopes were that you know we'd get a delay, push it back two, three, four weeks, and then uh, see what things looked like, see what the landscape looked like. And you know, I'm not sure what what details went into the uh, decision, the final decision got that that got made. But all of us realized, too, that was a possibility, a distinct possibility. And um, it wouldn't surprise me if that, that ends up being the way it goes for all of college football, but that remains to be seen. Uh, but I'm, I'm guessing the fact that uh, we made this decision, that there's probably some uh, very compelling uh, reason for that and some reasons for that. So we'll play it out. But as it pertains to us, yeah, it's just it's disappointing, but it's reality. All right. I know I can't see everyone on here on one screen. Uh, others who want to uh, have a question to follow up here with Coach? Steve, I'd hop in. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, Kirk, I know you said um, that you need to look at the framework of what 2021 would look like with regard to the spring season. 
I don't want to back you into a corner here, but just your gut feeling, is it realistic, do you think, at this moment in time to play in the spring? I think so. Yeah, I think, I think we can do anything we want if we uh, do it intelligently. And, um, you know, we've we got to be first and foremost, like everything else, got to think about our players, what's best for them. Uh, but I, I think it's totally doable. Uh, we may be playing in some colder games, but we were looking at that in December anyway if, if we had slid the schedule. So, you know, I mean, we've, we've played the Midwest. We've played in cold games. That's not the biggest, uh, biggest issue in the world. But I, I think it's uh, certainly doable. Uh, we have to be realistic about it. And then I think we'll also have to look at it in terms of spring and fall combined. So um, it'll be a different approach than ever before. But, you know, what we've gone through has already proven to be very different. So um, it's just all matters, right? You know, good minds getting together, talking about things and, you know, throwing them up on the wall and see what looks looks like and then reshaping and just uh, pushing forward. There's There's got to be an answer to it. All right, do we have others with questions? Hey, Coach. Yep. Uh, what are the financial ramifications, just the, the, the huge scope of this decision what was, that was made today? Yeah, I think every step of the way has been, been uh, impacted, you know, starting with the, the uh, discontinuation of basketball. It started back in March. So, you know, I'm not an expert uh, on that topic. That'd be more Gary's department, certainly. But, you know, just it's uh, – you know, much has already been written about it, and it's, it's been common knowledge for a long time. You know, there's a huge financial impact. But all, all that being said, let's, let's just say the whole thing shut down for an entire year. College sports will come back. You know, they may look different after this time period. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, there's going to be some impact that way. But, but college, college sports will come back. They'll return. And, you know, at some point we'll be up and running again. I just, I hope, uh, especially for the sake of our student athletes, I hope it's sooner than later and you know, we can get them back uh, doing what they love to do, which is, you know, preparing and competing. Uh, William Bender, you have a question? Go ahead, William. Yeah, thanks for doing this, Coach. Um, I know you've probably been asked this a few times with the spring season, but it, what is it that much of a potential drawback to ask a student athlete to come in the spring and play and then go back and do a second season in the fall that's almost unheard of in terms of uh not just this sport but almost any sport is that possible to ask an athlete to do that i think it's possible but i think we'd have to be really smart and we have to certainly alter the way we go about it so uh if this becomes a reality which uh, that's the next thing up on the board um first first challenge is to get our guys ready for a spring to play in the spring i don't think that's a huge challenge but then what you do after the spring season's ended and then, you know, uh, how that pertains to the next fall, the adjustments you'd make in the fall and then how you train to get ready for that. Obviously, it'll look different than it's ever looked before. But those, those are things I think if it's given thought and um, we do it in a smart way, for sure it can be done. Uh, Matt Randazzo, do you have a question? No? All right. Uh, Mr. Brockway, do you have a question? Yeah, Coach, another hypothetical involving spring, it, it does possibly open up the door for early enrollees. And uh, I don't know what kind of player it would take for someone to be physically ready, but could you see a possibility of an early enrollee contributing if there is a spring season? You know, it's a possibility. First of all, they'll have to make a ruling on that. I assume it's legal. But, um, you know, as, as you probably know, a lot of fall sports have been affected, too, in high schools. So there may be more early enrollees than ever. You know, I mean, all these things are unprecedented, everything that's going on right now. So uh, I think as we look forward in the coming months here, those are questions all of us are going to have to get answered. Uh, you may see more senior players leaving, too, as a result of this, although I know the NFL has the capability of sliding their draft back. They can slide things back. They can make adjustments. My guess is they will if, uh, if it ends up being spring football. So there, there are a lot of questions that remain to be answered right now. And, you know, the bad news, I guess, is we have plenty of time to figure that out. But, um, yeah, those are, those are things that are going to be up on the, on the discussion board as we move forward. Adam Rittenberg, did you have a question? Yeah, hey, Kirk, I was just wondering, um, how much guidance do you guys need now from the league and others as coaches going forward? That's been one thing I've heard you know, complaints from around the country that we haven't gotten enough to tell our guys. We need to have more leadership. We need to have more guidance. I know that's your role in a sense, but how much now that the decision's been made, 
do you need from the Big Ten or, or others uh, just, to, just to inform your players and inform what, what you guys would be doing here going forward? Well, it's, all, it's always important, uh, you know, and um, as we move forward right now, uh, as it pertains to football, obviously, um, you know, we have to figure out what, what, what the rules are going to be in the spring, or excuse me, the fall, uh, and, and thoughts about preparing in the spring. Uh, you know, if I was the commissioner of the world in sports, at least, you know, I think there'd be, uh, it'd be nice to see unity in college football, not to raid each other's rosters, uh, block transfers, things of that nature, at least in the coming month, just until the landscape settles a little bit. But, um, you know, that may be naive in my thinking. But uh, you'd like to think everybody would just kind of be respectful of everybody's positions right now and, uh, you know, let everybody figure out what, what the path is as we move forward. Thank you. For those, for those of you typing, if you could mute mute your screen while you're typing. Uh, Howard Griffith, did you have a question? No, maybe not. Okay. Uh, David, you had a, a follow-up question? I did too, Steve. Yep, yep. Go ahead, David. Hey, Kirk, just going back to the early enrollees, I know there are a couple of kids that we're currently planning on early enrolling into the program. Uh, with way out there but would you so they wouldn't have to potentially waste uh, the redshirt season or how do you think your, your staff's going to go about that I kind of lost part can you repeat the last part of the question yeah I, I just would you would you dis, would you discourage the kids who are going to be an early enrollee uh, from early enrolling now just because you wouldn't want to waste their redshirt season potentially um, you know, our policy with that has been if, if players are, are really compelled to do it, we, we let them uh, enroll early. We don't encourage it necessarily, but if they choose to do it, um, you know, that's up to them. Uh, then, you know, I haven't really thought this out at all. So, you know, we're, we're talking, thinking while we're talking. So the 2021 spring season, I don't know if it's going to be four game license, you know, for redshirting. I would hope that would remain and that would give guys potential access to plan. So we'll just, we'll just have to see all that unfolds and what the interpretations are. But uh, yeah, right now it's kind of an open book. And Scott Docterman, you had a follow-up? Yeah, I did. And, uh, you know, Kirk, in the last couple of years, you had a few players that probably fit that profile of skipping a year and, and becoming first-rounders or high draft picks. May, I, you certainly have draftable players. I'm not sure that today they would be – first rounders they probably need a a season to, to show up that kind of capability do you do you anticipate any kind of conversations with some of your players who are draftable probably but maybe need that extra season in order to lift their stock and and do you expect all of your players to return and play in the spring yeah I can't answer that last part I think that's up to you know players have to sift this out as we go along too um I think all of us figured out a couple of weeks ago, maybe long before that, that uh, there was a, a strong potential that, you know, surefire number one picks may, may opt out this season. You know, I think we, we saw some of that taking place over the last couple of weeks, and we may see more of that uh, in the future. That one totally surprised me. Um, and then as far as, you know, what it's going to look like in the spring, I think those are things now the next couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, I'm sure some players, not, not only in our program, but all programs, are going to think that out a little bit. Uh, obvious question, what's the NFL going to do with the draft? Are they going to keep it in April? Are they going to push it back a couple months? Uh, I've been told they have that flexibility. So I think that would weigh into to, uh, a player's thinking as well. But uh, yeah, those are things that I'm sure as we move down the road here a little bit are going to be thought about and discussed. We've got time for just a couple more. Anybody, uh, anybody else need to have a question here? All right. Yeah, Steve, I, I have a quick question. Uh, Kirk, you, you worked under these protocols since June. Could this season have worked with everything that you had to do with spacing and wearing masks and, and distancing and all that? How, how difficult would this season have been? You know, uh, both things I'll share with you. Uh, again, I'm not a medical professional. I don't, I've never claimed to be smart. Certainly not smart than anybody else uh, that I deal with, but Two, two obvious things came came to mind uh, during the pre-June period when we were all, you know, basically quarantined in our own own home areas. Um, 
First of all, I really felt whenever we got back here, the safest time for our players would be with would be under our guidance. And when I say ours, not necessarily coaches. I mean, we don't know anything about anything, but the people that set up the protocol, you know, we weren't going to be allowed back in the building without medical experts saying, here's how we're going to do things. Here's how we'll train. Here's how we'll do this, this, and this. So yeah, I, I, I've always believed the safest time for our players is when they're with us because it's a controlled environment, uh, especially during these times. But I also, it also dawned on me a long time ago, again, not being a medical expert, but at some point in football, you're gonna have 22 bodies out there on a field with people in close quarters and, and coming in contact, not all 22 at once, but um, the potential for contact was gonna be high. So unlike playing professional golf or driving race cars or some of the things that we've seen on TV, you know, football is a very different sport. How that, the, how that equates to, you know, the, the disease and communication of the virus, you know, I'm not smart enough to answer that question, but obviously I think that's a big concern in the medical community. And, that, and that's the one thing that we haven't done yet. We haven't had contact practice. So I feel like our practices have been pretty safe. I feel like, you know, and our medical people have watched um, you know, I don't think that's been the issue, but the, the big question was what, what happens when we start actually having contact on a routine basis. And that's, uh, that's the nature of football. So, uh, and I think that's, that's a question the NFL is going to find out. But at least they have a little bit better control. Uh, but nonetheless, it's a question that's going to have to be answered. And so I don't think anybody's got that answer yet. I really don't. But yeah, I do agree that at least when the guys were in our building, you know, we had a chance to make sure it was you know, the building's clean. Everybody's doing the things they're supposed to do to, to take precaution. All right. I think with that, we need, Coach has to get to a meeting. So we appreciate everyone today. Again, sorry for the short notice, but thanks for joining in. And uh, we'll be in touch. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time very much. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thanks, Kirk. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Thanks.